So today I wanted to do a quick video on some things. It's sort of a show and tell, sort of an inspiration thing. Back in 2012, when I first got into 3D printing, I designed a lot of things around the house, things that I would interact with, um, stuff that uh, kind of improves the house and wasn't necessarily fixing something that was broken, but just sort of improving on it or stylizing it a little bit. So let's take a, a, a look at a couple of things here. So one of the first things I made were these fan poles, and there's nothing really special to them other than uh, they look kind of cool. Once is light and once is fan. So I, I'm a designer. I like typography and icons. So this is a super simple design that I made in Tinkercad. It just has a hole through one of the letters and the letters are all combined. So this just kind of helps differentiate what is the fan pole, what is the light pole, right? So that's pretty simple. Going off the same type of concept, I thought I'd do one for um, my my fan. What is this called? Uh, blinds. So I have one that says closed, which is the one that tells me which is closed, and this one tells me it is open. So different colors, same concept where the letters are joined together, and it's just a simple extrusion, um, and you can have fun with them. This is just sort of a a, a test that I did to in, in Mesh Mixer for. For making lampshades using the Vernoy type of uh, design thing, nothing really to it. It's just a nice little thing. When it gets darker here, it, it casts some really nice shadows. This is sort of like a stylized version of a, I don't know, a keyhole, a key rack or something. I don't actually put keys on here uh, since I have them downstairs, but uh, really simple design. Prints flat, uh, prints with no support material because it just has a teeny little hook thing. And uh, it was one of the first things I made, and it just kind of combines a sort of like a skull with like um, this little text here that says keys, and it kind of has the shape of a, of a key, so that was kind of neat. You'll see a lot of uh, signs that I've 3D printed, so this is like a, a bathroom, this is where my bathroom is. And on my door I have this one here, it has my name logo, and I have a lot of different signs, so here's a... Here's Pedro's room. It says video pics on it with the little Instagram icon. And here's uh, Kiddo's room, Gavin. So that one says Gavin on it with a little music symbol. So those are kind of cool. Signs are one of those things that you can easily 3D print. Uh, this is just a simple like shower hook. It's for my loofah. And it's like sort of like a weird design. It's just a hook that hooks onto this little bar here. Nothing special, but um, it does, I do use it every day and it's very useful. I did a bunch of these like typography based um, handles. So this is open and you open it and there's like clothes or whatever. This is a closet and it's a simple like little design here, but I, I, I really like um, using typography to sort of depict what the thing is. So it's a lot like the fan poles or the, the blind poles, but I actually have done a couple other ones. Here's a like more of them, right? So one one drawer says tools, uh, this one says docs, and that one says art. So uh, going off the same theme, um, different colors and, and different uh, type, um, kind of depict what's in there. So that's kind of cool. And sort of to go off the key things, these are little antlers. This entire switch plate, um, light plate, whatever we call them, switch plates, I think. Uh, this is all 3D printed, you can hear, you can kind of see the build lines maybe, but the point of these horns is to like add stuff to it, like keys or uh, anything that can hold on here. So I actually have this uh, in a couple different places. Um, here's a pink one, and we used to sell these on our, we used to have an Etsy site, and these would sell a lot, so um, just little antlers are like super glued on, and you could put like your glasses here or your keys or something. And um, it works really well. Um, they, they're kind of old. They're printed in, um, in ABS and they still look brand new. So um, yeah, those are pretty cool. And then this is one of my favorite things uh, around the house. This is, uh, I'm in the garage right now, which is kind of a mess. But uh, what I did was, um, this is a, just a 3D printed box with an arcade button. And the arcade button is wired to the garage door. And it's super simple. It's an arcade button that I got from SparkFun. Uh, but you can use any type of button really and it's just a pleasure to push these and i'm not going to push it now because i don't need to open the garage door um, but yeah i really like this. this was printed in abs 
and it looks really nice. I actually have it in the front door as well. A lot of folks that um, like UPS or the mailman, they always really, really enjoy pushing our doorbell, um, especially during Halloween too, like all the kids who push the doorbell, they love it. So it's just a really cool way to like add some style or whatever to your house or um, yeah, if you have a doorbell. So that's kind of cool, I really like this one. I just spotted this one here, this is another one downstairs. Uh, open, different type, I think it's the same font, but not sure. Just, you know, super simple, there's like a screw hole in the back of it, I'd show it to you, but I mean, you get the point. So open, so that's kind of neat. All right, so real quick, this is the doorbell. You can probably hear it there. And this was printed in like PLA. It's withstanded the sun pretty well, so um, I, what is it maybe it's PLA maybe it's ABS I'm not, I remember but I, I matches the house really well the green and the and the brown um, so yeah that's the front door oh yeah here's another one a, a fan pole can't I can barely reach it uh, but it's there so that's kind of neat this is downstairs like a lot of photos of our family and stuff and I thought I'd make a sign that says that reflects that so you can always add typogra typography and iconography to sort of your set of photos and stuff so that's kind of neat. I have ton of, tons of these uh, uh, like cup holders or pencil holders, tool holders, whatever you want to call them. Um, it's just like a, like a simple spokes that like curve around and have like this thing. I made it in Maya um, playing with linear deformers and whatnot. Um, but, uh, I have a ton of these. I always print these out whenever it needs. I have like 10 of them or something. Um, and this is a really useful one. I mean, making a cup holder is like one of the easy things. It's have to be as complex or whatever as this, but I thought I'd do something kind of different, artsy. So that's kind of neat. Um, just some other random stuff back there. It's not really too useful, but kind of artsy. Uh, this, I actually don't use it that much, but you can see this is like foam tape. What I wanted to do with this one is to make like an arrow. I actually got this idea from one of the clothing stores and it used to be right there you can see the, <laughs> the glue there or whatever uh, I would uh, typically like mount it right here and then I would have like I mount my hat or some clothes or something to it I think I got this from Gap I like got the idea from Gap this is sort of solid um, but I've made a a hollow version too so that's just kind of a neat idea for you guys and most recently I made this like stand for uh, Right now I have my, my little camera, but I, I usually put my phone on here, but you could put like a, a, a display, a Raspberry Pi or something there. Uh, so that's interesting too. Um, this is the more uh, recent one. I put it this way. You do need a little bit of support material, but you know. So that's just a little sample of things I have around the house. Um, obviously there's more, but I just didn't have time to, to show everything. But uh, yeah, so I, I take this opportunity to, to, to inspire you guys to say, hey, you know what? Think about um, things that you interact with on a daily basis, um, things that other people can interact with. A, a lot of the times that when people visit my house, they're like, oh, cool, that's, I really like that, um, the, the fan poles, or I like the, the antler thing. Um, so there's, a, there's so much opportunities and, and a lot of creativity that you can really tap into with 3D printing, and that's like the whole point. Um, I, you know, I sort of came from a design background where I would design stuff on, you know, for websites and apps, mobile apps, and bringing that into the physical world, I, you can see I did a lot of typography, a lot of iconography. Um, so bridging that together with physical stuff, um, it's just awesome. And, and I really encourage you guys to do that because what I learned by doing all these things is to take measurements, tolerances, and just having that need to, uh, that drive to successfully print something and make it fit. So that form and function, you kind of combine them together, that gives you a, a good platform to learn and to drive to keep making things that sort of fit and have this sort of creativity to it, but still has that mechanical, like uh, dimension accuracy type stuff. So uh, I hope that inspires you guys. Um, this is stuff that um, when, I, when I didn't work at Adafruit, uh, me and Pedro tried to sell this stuff on our Etsy site, which actually worked pretty well, but um, as we did more projects with Adafruit, it didn't make sense to like maintain our Etsy shop. But that is sort of like the like the traditional way to go about it. It's like, oh, I'm going to design something, then I'm going to print it, then I'll make a company and business out of it. It can be sustainable if you really work hard at it and um, you make amazing products and stuff. 
Uh, so there's always that, but as a learning ground and stuff, it doesn't have to be your home. Maybe it's your school. Maybe you want to make some stuff at school or fix some things at school. I think that I always thought of that, uh, that being like a cool curriculum to like, if I was a teacher, I'd be like, okay, kids, find something that's broken in the classroom and then design something to fix it. Like a broken chair or a broken desk or something like that. And it, and it can be as small as a little, uh, fixture or it can be as big as like a chandelier or something. So. I don't know, just, uh, just, I've had this idea in my head for a while, like, I really want to share uh, things around the house for a while, and I um, hope that inspires you, so that's pretty much it, um, go out there and make something, guys, I will see you in the next one, bye.